Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding and Golding, here to discuss a, a much more common problem as of lately, uh, which is U.S. taxpayers receiving a Form 5471 penalty notice for delinquent filing of the form. The Form 5471 is a little more complicated than some of the other international information reporting forms. Uh, you've got something like the FBAR, where you just report the maximum value. You've got the Form 8938, maximum value, and maybe some additional information about income earned. The Form 5471 is different. <clears throat> what a person will have to include and how in-depth and annoying the form preparation will be will be dependent on what category of filer they are. There's five different categories of filers. They brought back category one. I believe it was 2018. And depending on which category a person qualifies for, they may have uh, relatively minimal to um, excessively annoying reporting on the 5471. A person can be either one category or multiple categories for the same business in the same year. This is very common with uh, controlled foreign corporations. Uh, whether they own 10%, if they acquire 10%, do they control it, is it a CFC, that will all impact it. Uh, one important thing to keep in mind is some tax players may have something like equivalent of an SM LLC, single member LLC overseas, and assume they don't have to file it. That That's not necessarily correct, even though even though a, um, a single member LLC is typically a disregarded entity in the US default provisions doesn't necessarily apply to foreign um, equivalents. The IRS has a list of what's called per se corporations. If unfortunately you fall on that list, then you probably have to file the 5471 anyway if you otherwise meet the requirements and will not be able to do uh, disregarding the entity. And then in 8858 for FDEs, foreign disregarded entities, something very important to look into. The form is due at the same time the tax return is due. And even if you don't have to file a tax return in any given year, um, maybe you don't earn enough income, et cetera, et cetera, you would still have to do the 5471 if, if you qualify uh, for filing the 5471. In other words, even if you don't have to file the tax return in that year, 5471 may still be required. The form 5471 goes on extension uh, when you file an extension for your tax return. So you don't have to do a 7004 as if you had a foreign trust. Instead, you just do the form 4868 like you're filing an extension for your regular tax return and the 5471 goes on extension. Now, filing a late form is somewhat dangerous. Oftentimes, a taxpayer will come to us, they realize later after they filed, they should have done a 5471. They went back to their preparer, their CPA, CPA just um, sent out a 5471 without a reasonable cost statement, without doing one of the voluntary disclosure programs, which we'll get to shortly, and they get hit with a penalty. The IRS has begun issuing what's called automatic assessed penalties, which is a bunch of garbage. Essentially, what will happen is a taxpayer will go back and file a late 3520 for a foreign gift, 3520A for a foreign trust, and uh, or 5471. They think it's over and then they come home one day, you know, they're checking their mail, maybe they got a little refund check or something, and then they see a CP15 notice for a gargantuan amount of money, uh, depending on how many 5471s were required, how long it took the person to file in that particular year for that particular 5471 or multiple 5471s, how many years of non-compliance. These penalties are automatic. What that means is uh, typically when you file the form, it can just go into the IRS database and it shoots out a, a penalty. Now with the CP15 notice, it is super important that you respond timely. There's various strategies depending on whether you don't wanna file and let it turn into something else so that you can go to court, et cetera, et cetera. But for most people, they're gonna to wanna to at least attempt a protest um, at the baseline level for the penalties that are received. Now, there are many different types of penalties. You can get civil penalties. If you read through the instructions, it mentions criminal penalties, but we've yet to have someone come to us and the only issue they had is a 5471 criminal penalty. I say that because watch out for the absurd fear mongering. You will inevitably find online as you're doing your Google research about how you're gonna spend forever in prison if you never filed the 5471. Most people, if they get hit with a penalty, it will be a civil penalty 
and that civil penalty may be waived, abated, um, etc., which I get to in, in, a, in a quick second. Um, something to keep in mind is the penalty starts at ten thousand dollars. It goes up from there, depending on how many forms do each year, how long it took that person to file. Was there an initial filing penalty, continuing file penalty? How many fifty four seventy ones were due? Were they due over multiple years? One thing to keep in in mind is counterpart form fifty four seventy two used to have a ten thousand dollar penalty as well. The IRS uh, got together and decided, you know what, that penalty should go up to twenty five thousand dollars as a minimum penalty. So that's why non compliance with fifty four seventy one is becoming a more concerning issue. If you're out of compliance in prior years, don't just run off half cocked and shoot out a fifty four seventy one. Speak to a, a specialist, speak to someone that, that you trust, um, and get a baseline idea of what you should do. Generally, it's going to involve submitting a reasonable cause statement or voluntary disclosure. Uh, VDP to the voluntary, dis- uh, the term voluntary disclosure, offshore voluntary disclosure, is used as a more generality. VDP is the voluntary disclosure program, it's used for offshore and domestic non compliance ever since. Uh, the IRS closed OBDP in September 2018. These days, it's primarily if someone was willful. It wasn't always for that back in the day. Uh, they also have the Streamline program, Streamline Domestic, and Streamline Offshore. If you're non-willful and you meet the specific requirements of either program, you can also do a reasonable cause. Um, they used to have the delinquent international information return submission procedures and they still have them technically but they've pretty much morphed back into a reasonable cause submission um and those are pretty much your options we we have uh we have lots of uh, free information available on our main website goldinglawyers.com um you can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if you think it's appropriate again my name is sean golding with golding and golding thank you for your time enjoy the rest of your day